Thanks very much. Uh, as my dear friend Archie Fisher often says, that was the last song. This is the encore. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, kind of a stupid uh, ritual, isn't it? The uh, up, getting up, getting down. <laughs> Going to the back of the room. <laughs> 1001, 1000. <laughs> so, um, I'll read you one, one more song of selection and then uh, it'll be something we can all uh, join in on. And, um, We have, uh, whatever side uh, you're on in the debate, um, we have confusing days ahead of us. And uh, community is what's going to uh, save us in little pockets across uh, the world, uh, and community is what happens here every night. And uh, uh, this is the thing that uh, gives me hope, gives me strength, and keeps me from despair. And um, uh, I'm just, I'm grateful for this. So grateful beyond words for this club and for the for the, the whole folk community in the Boston area and the whole New England area. It's, it's wonderful and uh, uh, all these little I hesitate to use the phrase thousand points of light. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was never much of a big I was never much of a fan of that guy either, but uh, I'd love to see him now. <laughs> anyway. Um, Christ, I said that out loud, didn't I? Um, <laughs> but there are just, I mean, these, these little pockets of, of not so much, well, maybe resistance, I don't call it that, but just people who are determined to be uh, positive and, and work uh, towards something uh, better and, and not despair. And um, it, it, it gives, it, it, we all have to, it gives me hope and we all have to support each other uh, with this. And uh, as I say, other people here tonight who might be on the, other side of the aisle. Uh, I, I can't really say much about that, but uh, anyway, um, um, thank you so much. Uh, always, uh, this, this, this is a huge part of my life. This, this room and uh, my relationship with um, you guys, I can't begin to, to tell you. So uh, there might be some people at home who have the book and they're watching this. Uh, on the tube, and uh, they can read along. What's that? Page seventy-three. It was a beautiful summer night on the shore of Lake Erie. Stan and a friend were living in a trailer near Port Dover that year. Port Dover is now mostly known for the big Friday the 13th biker rally, which happens every Friday the 13th. <laughs> no matter what kind of nut-freezing, pecker-shriveling weather it happens to be, the bikers turn out thousands of them. Bikers are tougher. Bikers are different. Bikers don't care about the weather. Bikers are not that smart, actually. <laughs> Port Dover was then a grubby little fishing town, still trying to cling to life, catching ever smaller numbers of the feeble and sickened fish that lived downstream from the industrial murk that poured into the water from Ohio. There was also a small carnival near the shore, some rusting rides, and a circle of tiny patient ponies waiting to carry the next load of snottering midgets around for the parents' cameras. There were hot dogs, fries, and burgers, the smell of smoke and grease mingled with pony poop. It was paradise. <laughs> it was also the place where the migrant teen workers would collect every night to spend their pay after a long day in the tobacco fields. Working in the tobacco fields was a rite of passage for a lot of kids around the country back then. They lived in tents and in barns and in the huge old mausoleum on Highway 6 outside of town. During the day, they'd pick the tobacco, then clean up as best they could and head for the bright lights and the beach which is where we were at the moment. There was Stan and his buddy Bill and a couple of other guitar players all sitting around the fire. There was no driftwood on the shore, so we had to burn some old railroad ties. There was a lot of bad tarry smoke and it was not so romantic, but hey, it was a fire and we were okay. I was better than okay. Actually, Stan had carefully poured me a half glass of beer mixed with ginger ale and said, there, make that last, you're only getting the one. I was all 14 maybe, but here I was sitting up with the older kids, and there was music. 
and there was firelight, and there were girls, lots of girls, all too old for me, but I was sitting right next to one at that very moment, and she was wearing a bathing suit. And in that bathing suit were actual breasts, <laughs> real, live breasts. And if the legends were true, nipples. I was one happy little kid. The breeze was coming in from the south and I could hear the waves as they gently rolled the dead fish onto the shore. One of the guys was singing an Eric Anderson song, Thirsty Boots. The others around the fire were chiming in, guitars, soft voices and harmony, the fire crackling and sputtering as the creosote flared up. It was a beautiful, quiet moment. Suddenly our little paradise was ruined by the sound of about 50 Harley Davidsons as they roared over the hill and spilled down towards us. Ah, oh, Jesus. Quick, they'll see the fire, somebody hissed, and we made frantic efforts to douse the flames, but by now, the railroad ties were fully ablaze, and we were clearly visible in the ugly, smoky light. Jesus, what were we going to do? We'd heard stories of what bikers did to young and innocent girls. We'd seen the movies. More to the point, I'd heard stories of what bikers did to young and innocent boys with cute Prince Valiant haircuts. I had dreamt of someday having a serious romantic relationship, but not like this. <laughs> The bikes did a half-circle pincer movement to cut off our escape. Our only way out now was to run into the filthy, stinking lake, and that was not going to happen, not even to avoid what was coming. I wondered, what would my new biker boyfriend call me? Would it be a cute name? <laughs> there was no escape. We were doomed. Stan was carefully putting away his guitar and even more carefully strapping his large chrome Hamilton guitar cable over his fist like brass knuckles, preparing to sell our lives dearly. The bikers were assembling in the darkness away from the firelight, milling ominously about and moving in for the kill. They were just a darker shadow against the black night. Stan reached out to make sure where his girlfriend was. Stay near me. If it gets bad, run for town. I, I could hear whimpering in the darkness, an annoying high-pitched keening sound. Stan said, darn it, shut the fuck up. <laughs> the bikers were coming closer. I could hear the jingle of the chains and the dull clunk of the souvenir human skulls they had tied around their waists. Closer, closer. They were still advancing. Ah, oh, shit, we were all gonna die. They stopped for a moment, still just outside the ring of the firelight. Then the leader stepped forward into the flickering glow. He was terrifying. Covered in matted hair and dark blue smeary prison tattoos with chains and filthy stinking leather made from the skins of deadly feral hogs he had no doubt killed with his bare hands. <laughs> he looked at Stan, who was presumably our leader, as he was the biggest of us. There was a long silence. The fire was still hissing and giving off foul-smelling steam from where some of us had frantically pissed on it. <laughs> then the leader of the bikers spoke. He said, and I swear this is the truth. Can you play Michael Row the Boat Ashore? <laughs> Michael Row the Boat Ashore. Hallelujah. Michael Row the Boat Ashore. Hallelujah. Sister, help the church to say.